Good morning everyone and welcome to our Wednesday Reflection. I'd like to begin by telling you a story entitled A Spider's Tale. So if you're all sitting comfortably, then I'll begin. Once upon a time, there was a tiny brown spider called Sam, who lived hidden amongst the rusting paintings in the furthest, darkest corner of Mr. Potts's garden shed. Sam didn't live there alone, though. There were other spiders with him. Bigger spiders, louder spiders, like Spike, Blackie and Jake, who hung precariously on their silken, insect-laden webs all the way from the light bulb across to the window pane, high up in the garden shed. Looking down from his prominent position, Spike, the most outspoken of the spiders, shouted loudly, Hey guys, focus your eyes on Tiny Sam if you want a laugh. For today's entertainment is about to begin. Are you watching him? Can't spin a beautiful web like I can. Look how small it is and see how he can only catch the tiniest of insects, unlike me, who catches hundreds of big, buzzing blue bottles every day. And look guys, if he's not careful, his web's going to break and he'll fall right into that open tin of red paint. Sam Spider listens sadly to Spike's repeated taunts as he frantically carried on spinning his web. Looking up, Sam saw how big and beautiful Spike's web was as he listened to Spike's endless boasting about his own self-importance and constant condemnation of Sam's abilities or seeming lack of them. Sam was so downcast and sad, he quickly lowered himself down from his web and scuttled off into the farthest corner of Mr. Potts's shed to hide. With tears dripping from his shiny eyes, Sam said to himself, Spike and the other spiders are always saying my webs aren't as beautiful as theirs and I'm not as good at catching flies as they are. I'm just useless. I've had enough of living here. Even though I catch all the insects down here on the floor, I'm just of no worth to them. Sam waited patiently for night to fall and under cover of darkness, Sam crawled as fast as his little legs would carry him out from his hiding place across the dusty floor under the gap in the shed door and out into the night. Across the grass he crawled and on into the flower beds where with trembling legs he climbed up into the nearest bush, curled himself up tight and waited fearfully for what tomorrow might bring. The next morning dawned bright and cold and Lola and Tim Mr. and Mrs. Potts's four-year-old twins ran out into the frost-encrusted garden to play football. But as usual, the ball was nowhere to be found. The twins searched frantically and suddenly Lola let out an ex excited squeal and danced around the garden for joy. On hearing all the squealing, Mrs. Potts ran out of the house to see what all the excitement was about. Lola grabbed her mum's hand and dragged her across to a beautiful red rose bush, which stood against the side of the garden shed. Look, mummy, Lola cried. Look at the beautiful diamonds glistening on the rose bush. Where did they come from? Mrs. Potts smiled. Oh, Lola, she said, they're not diamonds. It's Jack Frost that's covered a spider's web. Can you see how intricate the pattern is? How clever and beautiful the design? Sam Spider's face lit up as he listened to Mrs. Potts's words. I am as beautiful as all the other spiders, 
he said to himself. And it was worth sleeping out in the cold just to see how happy I made Lola and Mrs. Potts. In the garden shed, Spike could be seen peering out through the frosty window pane with head hung in shame, finally admitting that tiny Sam Spider was as clever, as beautiful and as good as him and all the other spiders. And Sam, well Sam whisked frantically around his frost-laden web, overjoyed that his worth had finally been recognised and that he wasn't a useless spider after all. Lola, of course, was unaware of Sam's happiness as she said to her mum, Can we take a photograph before the diamonds disappear? Of course, said mum. And maybe we could put it on the World Wide website, do you think? And Sam? Well, Sam simply scuttled off back to join Spike and the other spiders in Mr Potts's garden shed. The end. Does the story of Sam Spider ring any bells with you? Do you sometimes feel worthless, as though all you offer of yourself in God's service to the church goes unrecognised? Or are you sometimes guilty of being like Spike, looking down on others and thinking your gifts are of greater value, more important than those of others? Each of us, as Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians, is part of the body of Christ, the Church. We are all very different people. We each have a different part to play in the body of Christ. God has given each one of us our own individual gifts to be used together for his glory in the Church and in the world. The part we play, or the roles we fill in the life of the body, the church, are all of equal importance. No part, no person is of greater importance or worth than any other. Each and every person who makes up the body of Christ, the church, is special, is of infinite worth to the church, to God and to his kingdom. For we are all precious and beautiful in his sight. Because each one of us, by name to be his children, to follow in Christ's footsteps as we serve our awesome God in the world. We are all held by God in the warmth of his embrace and loved by him with a love which is indescribable, extravagant, amazing and free. So as we live in God's love, let us love one another as he first loved us, that all will know their chosen place in the body of Christ, the Church, and will be accepted, encouraged, valued and supported, and grow in the love of God and in the fellowship of his people and his Church. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we each have a part to play in the body of Christ, the Church. Help us to recognise not just the importance of our own part, but also the importance of each other's. For as your children, we are called to build each other up, not to knock each other down. We thank you for the gifts you so generously give to each one of us. Help us to use those gifts wisely, freely and sacrificially for the benefit of the whole of the body of Christ, that the Church, your Church, will grow and move forward together into the future you have planned for us. A future where your love is shown your love is shared. Your love is made known in the communities in which we live. That your kingdom 
of love, joy and peace will truly come on earth as it is in heaven. For we ask this in the precious name of Jesus, our Lord, our Saviour and our Friend. Amen.